Okay, so welcome to Retech, and today we're just going to do an, one of the last emulated machines for a while. Um, I'm kind of about a third of the way through the machines I want to do, but um, we're going to do the Atari ST. You can see it running in the background with Zool on here. And um, the reason I did it is because I've done the Amiga, and the Amiga turned out okay, even though I had to change the colour of the case because it was pretty bad. Um, but I've always liked the ST and it would be nice to have an emulated ST and keep as much software as possible in one location and make it easier to use as an everyday machine. And so I decided to um, do this one based on a 520 STE case because um, the ST FM case that I had wasn't particularly good so I decided to base it on a better case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish off this emulation session of um, with the Atari ST because it's one of, one of my favourite machines anyway and it would be nice to have this machine running the way I want it to run. And at the same time it's using the last of the Time Mouse software boards that I have and um, it would be nice to kind of have a, a little bit of an overview of which is the best emulated machine out of all of the boards and all of the ones I've built so far and to have a quick review of those and see which ones are actually worth doing and which ones are kind of so-so and um, that's what I'm going to do after this machine's complete. So today we're going to look at the Atari 520ST or the emulated Atari 520ST and see how we get on. So today I'm going to take this um, 520STE um, and basically do something with it because it's um, destroyed. I mean you can have a look underneath. The, the machine's not very good. Nothing really works on it. It's another one of those too far gone because I've used parts out of it for other machines. So I'm going to continue with my emulation thing because what I'm trying to do is to work through all of my bits and pieces that I have, my parts that um, are either, you know, no longer of any use to anyone because they are too far gone, and make them into something useful, such as the ZX Spectrum at the back that was um, made out from a recreated ZX Spectrum keyboard and case into a fully working machine. Now this is what I'm going to do with this. Um, it's going to be quite a quick video because you know it's um, more of can we actually do stuff with this rather than should we just throw it in the bin and waste you know the plastics or whatever's left of the machines that actually is useful. So I'm gradually working through my parts bin and I've still got a few more to kind of work through, such as old Spectrum Plus 2s, DK-Tronics keyboards, which need repairing, the odd Spectrum 1 to 8 and Plus as well to sort out, as well as quite a few other little bits and pieces. I think I've even got another Atari ST kicking about. Okay, so we have the plasticizer coat on here now, and it's just waiting to dry. Followed by the top coats on this machine now. This is your 520 STFM lower unit with the parts we're going to put into it. First off, we have the USB keyboard adapter, which is by Time Mouse Software again. It's one of the, the last ones I bought just to try out and see if they were any good. And it, they have been so far, and they've saved me a lot of time with Leonardo or Arduino boards trying to get key maps and so on. And, um, you know, they're, they're not bad. I mean, if you think about the cost of these in comparison to how long it would take you to do it yourself, then they kind of work out. But I do enjoy actually doing it myself. So I think the next one I'm going to do, if I do another one on the emulation side, um, I'm going to go back to using my own boards, but um, for now though, these are really neat, really good way of converting older, broken hardware into something useful. Okay, so now we have a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, or Model B, and um, I'm going to use that 
for the base of this machine and then we've got various cables to connect them together the um st is quite a simple build um you know really it, it's virtually all raspberry pi and the image you want to put on it and we'll cover how the keyboard works with the um, joystick ports works um when we put the machine together so for now we're going to find out where we're going to place these items now i'm sure a lot of you or most of you have seen raspberry pis now there are um millions of them out there they are now the most popular single make single production of um microcomputer out there they surpassed the commodore 64 a little while ago and um you can see why because they can be used for anything they can be used for projects like this as controller boards even as a desktop and the model 4 can be used as a normal pc um, it will do just about everything you would do on your tablet or your pc or even you know your laptop to be honest um, and they're incredibly good value for money and they're incredibly useful and i think that's one of the reasons why these raspberry pis have gone from being an educational unit to an all-rounder which um some say that this is really the modern micro and i'm kind of agreeing with them because you know you can do as much on these as you can on more expensive hardware and that's where the micro kind of leapt from originally it was um can we produce a machine that's cheap that's able to be used by the masses and to be functionally good for whatever anybody wanted to do and you know this is the modern version of it to be completely frank with you and um, it's a very useful piece of kit but in this setting we are going to have to have the usb ports and um, we're going to have to have access to them and um, we're also going to need access to the hdmi and the power audio no not so much because most of it's going to be through um hdmi but you know if you want to you can um, use it for a standalone speakers or plug it into a, a system that supports audio out um so you know that's your option and this is going to be quite easy to place because it's going to end up plugging into the bottom of the keyboard now the uh, simplest way of mounting it was to use the original cutout so i'm going to use the original cutout here for the pi which will sit here gives you access to everything that you need and then i'm going to use a usb hub um, i only need two ports on this because um, you're really only ever going to need a joystick port on this machine really to be honest if you wanted more you can cut this little strike here which will allow you to put all four into here and if you're very lucky you might even be able to use that post up against here and have all four in the machine anyway but probably the easiest way is to use two ports and then let, allow it to sit here so you're going to have both the units in the right hand corner of the case okay so i'm going to use mounting tape again because at the end of the day if i really wanted to keep this case as a retro machine as a, a recreation i would actually screw the machine into the bottom of the case or or at least get a couple of tiny little standoffs and put them through the case but i found that this um mounting tape is much better i mean it's um very hard to peel off it can be peeled off but it holds these little boards in place very very well and if i ever want to reuse this case the whole idea is i'm not going to be destroying a good case so you know i may find a complete system board one day for one of these um or get one working and i might want to reuse this case so i'm going to mount the pie in this corner right up against it and i'm going to push it into place okay so that's nice and secure now so now i've taken the usb hub out of its case because it will fit in between this strike um nice and easily so you just ease it through 
and then push it down onto the mounting tape and secure it into place. And all that's left to do is to connect it up to one of your USB ports on the machine itself. Again that keeps it nice and neat. So the next thing is to take a keyboard and it cannot be the STE keyboard because it has to use the joystick ports underneath and it uses them as a, a USB adapter so it uses these as a standard USB controller once it's plugged into the uh, keyboard controller which is why you can't particularly use the uh, STE machine because the, these these are actually on the board itself so this is a 520ST keyboard and all you need to do is then plug in the cable to one of these and as you might be able to see it's actually keyed as well so you can't plug it in the incorrect way round so now you have the small USB keyboard adapter plugged in and then that's really it you just got to mount this inside the case and to keep things neat I'm going to mount everything along the back of the case okay so we've got everything mounted in the um, USB keyboard interface the four port hub and your Raspberry Pi is all mounted there ready to be used so the next thing is you just have to connect the two items together and that uses a USB cable this is quite a long cable so I'm just going to extend as much as I need and have it under the keyboard itself so we're just going to do that now and there we have it the reason it's quite a long cable is because it was originally designed for this to be used as an external USB keyboard it wasn't particularly designed as a, an internal item um, it was you know so you could use this on a PC as a keyboard and so on because most of the keys on your Atari ST are very similar to a standard modern PC keyboard so this could be very easily used as a PC keyboard as well but I'm going to use it internally and use it as a Raspberry Pi or a Raspberry Pi enabled Atari ST so we're going to now just get it all together and see what it looks like and there we have is one modern version of an Atari ST 520 ST and um, I'm just going to power it on and see what it looks like okay so we have the 520 ST here fully built and it's on the desk and it looks like a nice machine and um, it's to all intents and purposes is still an Atari 520 ST and if I pan up you can see Zool running. It, for all intents and purposes it's exactly the same and it plays the same and it runs the same and it's no real difference you know it's a nice machine to have. So what else does it like? What, well at the end of the day I'm using a standard USB joypad on here. You can use normal Atari joysticks and they actually work on the same joystick port underneath the keyboard as well so that, that's a nice addition and you can use a standard or USB mouse it's actually one of my favorite mice and I'm using it with this because you know it'll use any USB mouse that you would like to use on it and it makes life a lot easier so as you can see now I've just booted into the desktop it's quite a nice little desktop and it's exactly the same as the standard Atari desktop and the, the good thing about it all of my software is actually neatly stored away so clicking on these you can see it's all put in order and you have a list of games and software that you might ordinary have but other than the files and folders on here everything is exactly the same as a standard Atari ST with the addition that you can actually plug in extra USB keys in here full of software and run them as a disk so you're not kind of limited to what you can do on this machine either and it makes it a lot easier to keep all of your software in one place and to run anything that you want to run 
there's no difference between using this and a standard Atari 520 or whichever Atari ST range you'd like it to emulate because it will do all of them including Blitter, the Enhanced, the Standard ST and so on. So there's no chopping and changing models just to get something to run. So if I click on here and let's select Jetpack I'd say. Okay, so we just get Jetpack running. And it's, you know, it's, it's obviously a lot quicker than disk. And again, it runs really well and You know, it's just an updated version of what was on this Sinclair Spectrum, which, you know, is quite nice, quite nostalgic, really. Okay. So it runs like any other Atari ST. OK, so we'll run SysInfo on this machine, and you can see it's running 68,000, 8 MHz. And it's basically emulating a standard 68,000 Atari ST. And, um, you know, everything that you would get sysinfo-wise on a normal or a, a real, if you want to put it that way, 520 STFM or 520 STE or 1040 STE or whichever model you're running will actually come up as the machine you're actually emulating on here. So... You know, it's very, very good and it's very accurate. And um, so far, I haven't had any crashes on this machine, which is really, really nice. So that was the Atari 520ST and basically getting the machine to emulate and be reliable um, was quite a straightforward thing to do once you've got the software gathered together and you've got the hardware necessary to do so. But, you know, if you start off with a a really badly damaged machine then it makes a lot of sense so i hope you've enjoyed watching my emulation series it's to say i'm about a third of the way through um but i'm gonna cover other machines um for the next few episodes to give everyone a little bit of a break from the emulators and um i'll come back to them a little bit further down the line okay so i hope you've enjoyed this i hope you've enjoyed watching how these machines are put together and how useful they can be and i hope you'll subscribe because there's a lot more videos and a lot more machines to cover in the future okay so thanks for watching and i'll see you again shortly in the future okay thank you